Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to a, uh, a long form video. It's been a while. Uh, I've just been doing YouTube shorts over the last few months. I think my last long form video was uh, about six months ago, maybe five months ago. It's been a while for sure. Anyway, it's about five o'clock in the morning. I am headed out for a little road trip this morning just to, just to get away. And uh, I'm gonna drive about an hour north up the coast of Florida here and then an hour west towards the center of the state. Like I said, it's five o'clock in the morning. It's pretty dark right now, so I will uh, film more when I get up there and get where I'm going. All right, so I'm about an hour north right now. I had to pull over really quick at the rest area because I have the bladder of a child. So I'll be right back. All right, now that that business is taken care of, uh, like I said, I'm about an hour north of where I live. I'm headed up the east coast of Florida. Uh, I-95 is right behind me. About five miles, I'm getting ready to get off the highway and head west towards the center of the state, probably about an hour inland. And this isn't really a landscape photography vlog this morning. I'm just kind of trying to get away from everything and a little road trip and to find, find what I can find. Yeah, hope you follow along on the adventure this morning. Being a landscape and seascape photographer, I found myself constantly looking for an open view to the east. And sure enough, it looks like there was an amazing sunrise happening, of course. Well, never mind that. Let's press on. I intentionally exited I-95 and took State Road 714 west towards Okeechobee, Florida. At first, it's fairly uninteresting with open farmland on the left and just some trees blocking the view to the right. About seven miles in on this 20 mile section of road, the landscape gets more beautiful as now the trees start to line both sides of the road. And the farther and farther you get down the road, the trees start to slowly arch just a little bit more overhead. And after about 12 miles, the trees completely cover the road, making a beautiful tunnel of trees and what I consider to be the most scenic drive in all of South Florida. All right, I am about two hours from home now. I just pulled into a town called Okeechobee. It sits at the northern tip of Lake Okeechobee. It's got about five and a half thousand people. It's not a big, big town by any means, but it feels like a big town out here in the middle of nowhere. It's kind of a farming town. The surrounding area is a lot of cattle ranches and agricultural farms. It has a large Hispanic population. A lot of the Hispanic uh, people work the farms, you know, basically doing jobs that I'm thankful that they do because a lot of Americans won't do those kind of jobs. It's where we get a lot of our produce from, so bless those guys for getting out there and doing that hard work uh, <laughs> that a lot of us would not do. So one of the reasons for this road trip this morning, other than to just get away and get out of town, uh, is to, um, well some of you might know if you follow me on Instagram, one of my other passions other than landscape and seascape photography is photographing old things abandoned houses, derelict buildings, old road signs, rusted out farm equipment. I call it Americana. I'm not sure what the actual term is, but you know, I kind of look for, you know, just the old things that, you know, are probably not in the best shape anymore that kind of harken back to, I think, the days uh, that the United States or America was, was great. Just kind of a, a nostalgic feeling. So yeah, that's kind of the idea this morning to turn off the GPS, put the map away, drive down roads that people normally wouldn't drive down and just look around and, and photograph things that maybe uh, time forgot a little bit. So here's an old service station. It doesn't really look old though. Looks like they preserved it really well, but still pretty cool to see. And right next to the old service station is the old bank of Okeechobee. Again, it looks like it's been preserved pretty well. Sorry, I'm right on the main street here in Okeechobee. As you can see there is an operation from 1914 to 1926. Pretty cool. Not really old, but uh, and not really what I'm looking for, but still cool to see. As you can probably expect with this kind of photography, there's a lot of 
driving and turning around and stopping and starting again and uh, pulling over and looking for parking spots. It's not always convenient. All right, let's move on to the next location. So this is kind of interesting. Some of you people who don't live in the United States might not know what this is. Uh, this is a drive through liquor store. It's closed right now, but when they open, they'll open that metal gate right there. And then you just drive through and pick up whatever liquor, beer, or wine that you want, and then you drive off. A lot of states have banned these nowadays, but uh, apparently this is still legal here in Florida. I haven't seen, <laughs> seen one in quite a while, though. All right, drive through liquor store. One of the things I do love to photograph are old country stores. And this is maybe not the best example, but you know, something like this, you know, just old out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, it's always fun to go in and look around. They always have some cool trinkets and uh, always reasonably priced. And yeah, just uh, always try to stop and give them some business whenever I can. Joanna absolutely hates to go in with me, uh, but I've never found a bad one. I've never found one to be unfriendly or scary. Or anything like that so yeah just uh, put that picture of this old general store up on the screen for you right now so this beautiful old house was sitting right next to the general store at first I thought it was abandoned but the more I looked at it I realized that it wasn't the plywood that you see covering the upstairs window is actually really common in the area there's a lot of poverty around Lake Okeechobee, and I guess it's just a cheaper fix to cover the windows with plywood versus repairing the glass. But this beauty was sitting in their backyard. I think it's a Porsche 928 from the 1990s, but I'm not really a car guy, so I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments if you know what it is. So this appears to be <laughs> some kind of bicycle graveyard. It's just dozens and dozens of old bikes just down the middle of nowhere off the side of the main road. It's pretty cool though. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Just oddities like that. All right, moving on now. Still heading north up the center of the state. Let's see what we can find. So Florida is not exactly the best place for this kind of photography, especially from say maybe the middle section of the state, which is like Orlando and down south to where I live. Everything is just so new. It was only settled about a hundred years ago. Everything's very touristy that when something becomes old or derelict, it is torn down right away. Land and property is at such a premium that it's snatched up right away and something shiny and new is built in its place. To get this kind of good abandoned type photography, you really have to go north of Orlando towards the northern part of Florida or even southern Georgia where things were settled much longer ago and uh, things have started to, you know, deteriorate over the ages you know you have a lot of abandoned houses you have just tons of derelict buildings old cemeteries from the 1700s uh just as southern florida is just not the best place you can occasionally find something good uh, which i'm trying to show you today but this will all change when i go move to west virginia here in about four or five months you know west virginia used to be part of virginia which is one of the original 13 colonies settled back early 1700s maybe even late 1600s so there is something abandoned old derelict broken down around every corner it seems like up there but of course west virginia one of the reasons we're moving there is i think one of the prettiest states in the united states and the opportunity for landscape photography is going to be amazing there so i think i'm gonna have to divide my time uh, between the two between landscape photography and this kind of abandoned photography i may even start a separate youtube channel to do this kind of photography if people are so inclined to follow along with that kind of thing so anyway just uh, kind of give you a little background on why i'm doing what i'm doing and what i plan on doing in the future all right like i said heading north towards the center of the state probably about an hour south of orlando right now i'm gonna get to this place called yeehaw junction which i know has a uh, abandoned restaurant and inn Hopefully they haven't torn it down. I saw it about three months ago, but I, did, I haven't shown you on a vlog. So I'd like to photograph that again, show it to you on video, and then maybe turn around and head home because at that point I'm about three hours from home. All right, we'll see you in Yeehaw Junction. Yeehaw Junction sits at the crossroads of US 441 and Florida State Road 60 just off the Florida Turnpike. 
It was originally called Jackass Crossing until the Florida State Legislature voted to change the name to Yeehaw Junction back in the 1950s. The main attraction at Yeehaw Junction, okay, let's be honest, it's the only attraction, is the now abandoned Desert Inn Bar and Restaurant, which was built in the late 1800s. Local ranchers, cowboys, and lumbermen used to ride their mules to the Desert Inn, which was then a brothel, and that's the reason the crossroads were called Jackass Crossing prior to 1950. It's been abandoned for many years now. The restaurant and bar closed in the early 2000s, while the inn stayed open until 2018. It's been added to the National Register of Historic Places, and there's been talks of it being restored. However, a semi-truck plowed into it back in 2019, and no work has ever been done on it since. Here's a better look at the inn, which is just off to the side of the restaurant, and I believe it had about 10 rooms or so. And this is the other side of the restaurant, which I actually believe would have been the front from the look at the door there. It also appears that they might have had a little patio area as well, just up those stairs. And this is the side where the semi truck smashed into the restaurant back in 2019, probably ending any hopes of it ever being restored. Here's a few images that I took today. Alright, so I think this is going to be my last stop for today. I am in an old cemetery. I'm in Fort Drum, Florida. A little history about Fort Drum. About a million years or more ago, it was uh, underwater uh, as part of Lake Okeechobee, which is really, it's about 40 miles south of here. So that tells you how big Lake Okeechobee was at the time. It's actually still really big, but apparently it took up most of the center part of Florida here. So. This is Fort Drum, so fast forward a million years or so, give or take. In 1842 was the end of the, I believe the Second Seminole War, which is basically the United States Army against the Seminole Indians of Florida. And that ended in 1842. And shortly thereafter, the US Army built a series of forts throughout the center part of Florida, one being here in Fort Drum. Now they didn't occupy it very long, was abandoned shortly after they built it and it's I don't believe it's still standing I haven't seen any reference to it anywhere in about 1870 just shortly after the Civil War the American Civil War settlers started in this area uh, because it, they thought it was gonna be a great place for uh, cattle and farm and agriculture which it is everything around us here is our cattle farms and agricultural type farms so yeah these uh, this is the Fort Drum Cemetery it's not very big and it's not even full. This is the old part of the cemetery and across the way, I guess, is the newer part of the cemetery. So I'm gonna look around here. You know, it's beautiful. These live oak trees behind me with the nice Spanish moss hanging off of it. Uh, something you will only find here in the Southern part of the United States. Yeah. See if there's anything to, any old gravestones to take photos of here. Uh, sometimes you can find some pretty old and interesting stuff. So if these were the original settlers, you know, some of these people were probably born probably around 1800 or so, maybe even a little bit before that. All right, before I go, I want to show you this gravestone here. You only find this in the uh, American South. Uh, this gentleman was born in 1836 and died in 1903. And as you can see there by the Confederate flag, he used to be a soldier fighting for the South in the American Civil War kind of a big controversial thing over here a lot of this stuff is being removed but every once in a while you can find one there's several graves around here with a somebody's come by and hung a, a confederate flag next to it so yeah uh, right or wrong it's part of american history and i think it's personally good to to maintain uh history and learn from it I'm gonna wrap this up. Hope you've enjoyed this, uh, maybe what is a precursor to 
kind of how my channel goes or maybe a separate YouTube channel. And let me know in the comments below what you think of this, whether you like the history part of it or not, or you just kind of want to see the video and the photos. Uh, I like doing the history part of it. So let me know what you think. All right, everybody. Hope you're doing good out there. Hope you've enjoyed the video. And uh, sub, like, comment, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.